So finding the forest through the trees actually became the name of the system that I'm going to describe now, which is a new way that has just been published to, um, to build very, very large buildings. Um, about a year and a bit ago, we, were, we proposed and received grant funding to basically set out with some engineers, some cost consultants, some code consultants to build what now is a 240-page document that really lays out the plans of how to build very large buildings up to 30 stories tall in wood using this new system. Um, we designed it very specifically around Vancouver, and we decided that our report needed to demonstrate that this was, A, rigorous from a technical point of view, but also rigorous enough to show that it was cost effective and tell the story why consumers would want to buy it, why developers would want to do it, how people would ultimately market these ideas, and also, obviously, the, the other sort of critical parts of how they worked and what their sustainable story really would be. So in Vancouver, where I live, it's a high earthquake zone. We wanted to really challenge our system by building in the highest earthquake zone in Canada, uh, by proposing it in that environment, um, and also proposing it in a dense urban environment and really work with contractors to understand how we would actually technically build something on that scale. So the system's actually remarkably simple. The first version of this I built with my son when he was six, and we sat down on the ground together and put it together. Sometimes the best ideas are just that easy. And I sort of pulled, I, I work with some outstanding world-class wood engineers in Vancouver. I'm lucky. I come from a wood culture, and there's some outstanding wood engineers. Um, I've worked with the engineers of this building in New York, and, and my engineers in Vancouver actually have been helping the, the New York firm understand wood a little more. We, we have a great culture for wood. And when I pulled them aside, I said, guys, you know, my son Macklew and I have been making this, and I really think this is interesting, and this has some real potential to build big, and what do you guys think? And they, they sort of said, yeah, this actually works, and we started working on it more and more over the last five years until we reached this point where we realized that it's not only possible, it's actually really practical to do this, and it's shaken things up a little bit in the big conversation worldwide. Because this just came out um, two weeks ago publicly, it's kind of an interesting moment for me just personally and for our firm because what's happened is, you know, we spoke to CNN a week ago and we we're talking to Bulgaria newspapers and some guy from Iraq, con you know, contacted me about how to do this. So it's become a very quick and very instant conversation because it seems so different. The idea of, you know, to get to nine stories is astounding. To talk about 30 stories obviously is a very new paradigm shift for the world to get their head around. And, uh, and ultimately, we think it's very realistic. Much like uh, what Andrew just described, the idea is motivated by sustainable methods of building, these big urban buildings. But also, it's about how we innovate for faster, lighter, less expensive, and better performing uh, for the global s uh, scales of challenges. And that, those challenges, again, climate change, world housing, we've got to deal with them. Because as we talk world housing, especially in the developing world, the issues kind of collide. If we build the way we're building today to solve that 3 billion people that need a new affordable home in the next 20 years, we are obviously going to significantly impact climate footprint, and we can't do that. There has to be a new way. So the, um, the system, as I say, is really simple, and in our case, we use a little bit of steel. It's an effectively a 98% wood building. The elevator, like Andrew's building, the elevator cores, the stair cores are all wood. These using these mass timber products. Um, but we use a little bit of wood, uh, steel, and the reason we do that is in a high earthquake zone, we need something that's ductile, that gives a little and gives and sort of has a little more el elasticity to it. And so we use the steel, ironically, as the weak joint in the design. So for, for anybody in engineering, this is a strong column, weak beam design. And what's interesting in the way we approach it is we had some of the best seismic engineers in North America do our peer review. And what, what's interesting is the formula, technical way that an engineer anal analyzes our building is it uses the exact same software you would in, in concrete. So it's actually very easy for a lot of engineers to get their heads into how to do this. It's just using this very new material. The material, those mass timber materials that Andrew touched on, laminated strand lumber, laminated veneer lumber, and CLT, cross-laminated timber, have been around for a long time. A hundred years ago in BC, if you wanted to build a fireproof wall, you took two by fours and nailed them together, or two by sixes and nailed them together and made a massive solid wall. So when I renovate a building in, in my community, I'm often hitting a massive piece of wood, and the only reason it's there is because of fire. It's completely hidden in the wall. 
But what we know is masses, massive pieces of wood actually resist fire and behave really predictably in fire, which is very counterintuitive to the way a lot of people feel about wood. But the difference is it's easy to light a fire with a little piece of little sticks to start it up. It's very hard. If you start with a log and try to get it on fire, it's very difficult to get it to work. That's why the torches on the balcony weren't, weren't lighting up necessarily for, for when they were putting the, the waterproofing on. So just to kind of give you an overview, I'm not going to go into a lot of the detail of our report, but what we were trying to do, again, is say, it's one thing to have a good sustainable message, but what we know statistically is 95% of the public will tell you that they will pay more for something that is green, but only 5% actually do. This system, these ideas don't sell because they're good for the planet. That's not what's going to happen, even though luckily Andrew's building sold out with people with that attitude. That's not going to propagate the idea. So instead, we had to make this cost effective. We, and part of it was speed. And part of it was showing that it had all the same flexibility as any concrete building. So this is a concrete building. And what we did in our study was we actually looked at a 12-story concrete building, 20-story concrete building, and a 30-story concrete building. And every step of the way, because concrete's what we build with in Vancouver, not steel, every step of the way we would compare our wood system to a concrete system. No matter what the, what the metrics were going to be, we would get a rigorous comparison. And what came really important in that was that in order to get developers to want to do these kinds of buildings, they want flexibility. And we wanted to prove that we could do this not just in residential buildings, but ultimately in office buildings. And in order to do that, you really want a plan, a building plan, that's, that's, that's wall-free. It's just open, free plan. So that means in an office, you can lay out your office space however you want, um, and you can build, if it was residential, you can build your residential unit wherever you want. So in our system, we're using these large-scale panels, and we tilt them up, and they're 64 feet long if they're LVL or LSL, so they're six stories tall when you tip them up. And we're building up to 12 stories, we're building with glue lamb columns, just like these big beams here, um, slabs of these large uh, mass timber panels a central core and an elevator core made entirely of the, of the timber panels, and some steel ledgers that help us again with the flexibility of the system. Um, what we found is up to 20 stories, up to 12, we had this free, beautiful free open plan. You could have all glass exterior, which a lot of <coughs> buildings are made that way. That's not the way hopefully we'll be building buildings in the future, because it's obviously terrible from an energy performance point of view. Um, but um, you know, this gives the developers flexibility. And what we found is if we move uh, away from the columns and put solid panels on the exterior, we can actually get up to 20 stories. Or we could put brace walls inside, a little bit more like Andrew's building with a few more load-bearing walls on the inside. And ultimately, if we, to get to 30 stories, we'd mix those two things, make a fairly solid exterior and walls on the inside. Since this diagram was made, we've actually been able to show that we can do option two and three here all the way to 30 stories which means that we can make an office building 30 stories tall in wood. It means we can make a flexible plan for a developer to do a, a housing project in 30 stories, which is an extraordinary sort of result um, that we were truthfully a bit surprised by as we pushed the engineering further and further. So I'm going to go quickly now in this part. But as I said, what was important about our system was that we tested everything. So the, in this case, we actually met with um, uh, construction companies, some of the biggest ones in Canada, and talked about how you would actually erect them. And for us, what was funny with that is that they didn't know who to bring to the meetings. They didn't, this isn't something anybody does. Do we bring wood carpenters? No, because these panels are massive. This isn't wood carpentry. We don't, do we bring concrete guys? No, because that doesn't make any sense. There really isn't a clear trade that actually builds this. It's probably closest to steel in some respects because it's kind of a kit of parts that goes together, but it's in many respects kind of this big unknown because nobody's been doing it. Um, but they were excited about it, and that was what was great. It's every single group we talked to, from contractors to developers to building code officials, um, were really A, intrigued, and B, after they learned and read more and understood what we were talking about, really all of the obstacles seemed to be slowly disappearing for us. Everybody was coming on side because the ideas seemed to be researched and understood well enough. And with the contractors, to our surprise, we basically are building up the, the central elevator core, bracing it, 
and building in lifts of six stories at a time. So you can see these panels. The elegance is basically the simple way for everybody to think about it is a two by four, the way we build small residential houses, has now become a giant piece of wood that's eight feet wide and 64 feet long and three and a half inches thick and at times seven inches thick to allow us to get these huge heights.